North Korea is suspected in Bitcoin heist Seoul investigators in South Korea are looking into North Korea's possible involvement in a heist from a Bitcoin exchange that collapsed here on Tuesday, according to people familiar with the situation, as the sanctions-choked regime develops new ways to raise money. The investigation into the hack of Seoul-based exchange Yubit, led by South Korean law enforcement and a state cybersecurity agency, is still in its infancy and a review of the malware code could take weeks, the people said. But the people said there were telltale signs and historical evidence that North Korea was behind the Yubit attack. North Korean hackers in April targeted the same cryptocurrency exchange, operating under a different name, several of the people said. Yapian, the company that operates Yubit, suspended trading and filed for bankruptcy after Tuesday's hack. The Bitcoin heist follows similar suspected Pyongyang-directed offensives against other South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges and an increasing number of attempts to steal from individual investors on Tuesday. The White House said North Korea directed this year's Wanakery ransomware attack, which locked digital files and demanded Bitcoin payment for their release. South Korean police and the Korea Internet and Security Agency said they had begun an investigation into the Yubit hack but were still determining the scope of the situation. A North Korean cyber army of 7,000 hackers around the world has shifted tactics over the past two years to become more motivated by financial gain, pilfering from banks and, more recently, focusing on cryptocurrencies, according to cybersecurity researchers. North Korea has denied involvement in the hacking incidents. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has a critical need for funds as his regime advances its nuclear weapons program in the face of tightened economic sanctions. North Korea is an ideal country to use hacking and financial tools like Bitcoin, said Troy Stangerone, a senior director at the Korea Economic Institute in Washington. They're experimenting with ways to earn back lost money from sanctions. The Bitcoin craze has created a unique opportunity, as a rush of new investors bet on a market they had barely heard of until recently, said Ryan Kalember, a senior vice president at Proofpoint Incorporated, a cybersecurity firm that published a recent report detailing Pyongyang's Bitcoin campaigns. Much of the cryptocurrency system is highly vulnerable, Mr. Kalember said. Because this world is moving so fast and now it's so lucrative, it's really exactly what a cyber criminal is looking for. The Bitcoin itself is supposed to be secure and safeguarded by a unique encryption code. But cyber thieves have breached cryptocurrency exchanges or so-called digital wallets, stealing encrypted passwords as well as Bitcoins. For North Korea, stealing Bitcoin could be an attractive endeavor because of the cryptocurrency's ability to rise sharply in value over a relatively short period. The price of one Bitcoin started this year at just under $1,000 and has experienced a frenetic rally, with choppy prices swings to as high as nearly $20,000 this past weekend. The moves in Bitcoin and other digital currencies starkly contrast most traditional financial markets in 2017, like stocks and bonds, where volatility has been historically low. For average consumers, online marketplaces can convert Bitcoin into regular cash that can be sent to bank accounts, but North Korea is allegedly swiping vast sums of Bitcoin significantly more than individuals typically own and must also cover its tracks. To do that, North Korea, in theory, could divvy up the Bitcoin bounty into different accounts, then move the smaller sums in and out of different cryptocurrency exchanges. Each transfer would further erode the links to the original owners. Eventually, North Korea could create enough anonymity to cash out the Bitcoin like anyone else. South Korea is among the most active Bitcoin markets, ranking number three after the US and Japan in terms of national currency trade volume, according to data firm CoinHills, which tracks digital currencies. South Korea has no legal protections for consumers who become victims of exchange hackings, unlike with its banks and securities firms, said A.H.N. Chan Sik, an attorney at Seoul law firm HMP Law. But lax security protocols haven't repelled investors, a concern even for virtual currency's biggest advocates. Investors need to be more alert, said Kim Wa Joon, the CEO head of a cryptocurrency exchange industry group. Consumers need to be more sensitive about where they put their money. Exchanges are aware that security breaches present serious risks. One of South Korea's top exchanges by trading volume, Coinun, is headed by a former hacker. Since 2017, 